Li Zhiqi, a beautiful yet farcical idea of what China could be. Li Zhiqi is an incredibly popular YouTube channel, and this is problematic. It's not problematic because it's a popular YouTube channel. It's not even problematic because of its content, which is very beautiful and incredibly well shot. It's problematic from the point of view that it is a lie. So the story of Li Zhiqi apparently goes that uh, she failed in the big city and had to move back to her rural village in the farmlands of Sichuan. And we get to follow her around as she does everyday traditional things like building bamboo furniture, cooking specialty dishes, uh, knitting wool, doing all sorts of very traditional Chinese things. Now, I absolutely love Chinese culture, and so it's fascinating to see these videos because what's portrayed in them is real, true, historical Chinese culture. The kind of thing that you would expect in the rural farmlands of China a very, very long time ago. It's just not at all representative of what rural China really is, especially these days. How can I say something like that? Well, very simple, because I've spent years traveling through the rural countryside of China. And to be honest, it's in a bit of a state. Since the big push for urbanization, and of course, after the terrible purges of the Great Leap Backwards and the cultural devolution, the countryside's kind of in a bit of a mess. Although still about 40% of China's population lives in the rural countryside, it's very ramshackle, run down, incredibly poor, and in a bit of a state, as I said, usually you only find older people living in the rural countryside. In, in fact, throughout all my travels, it was very difficult to see anyone who wasn't either very old or very young in the rural countryside. Certainly no one that looks like Li Zhiqi anyway. But here's the thing. According to the story, she failed in the cities and had to move back to her rural countryside home. But there's no one that I know in China who failed in the city and had to move back to their rural countryside home who can afford the camera equipment and professional videographers to follow them around like she does. So this immediately raises a couple of red flags because I know a lot about videography. Although I am just a simple YouTuber, I have shot TV documentaries. I have been around production crews and, you know, professional cameras. I know how to operate them and I understand how they work. And the cameras that are being used in Li Zhiqi's videos are state-of-the-art, incredibly expensive cameras. So how is it that a rural girl with no money that she had to move back to her rural farmland can afford a 10,000 US dollar camera, at least 10,000, and a full-time videographer who's so professional that he knows exactly what time of day to shoot to get the best lighting, the best angles, the best setups? Well, it's pretty straightforward that this is not what it seems. Her harshest critics are actually Chinese people. I took a look on the Chinese internet and I tell you what, it is toxic. You've got people there trying to expose her life in the city, the fact that her sob story about growing up isn't true, that her parents are still alive, all sorts of things like this. Now, I'm not going to get into this. This is the kind of thing I hate the most. I hate character assassination and I really hate this kind of drama. And that's not what this video is about. I actually appreciate her videos and I like what she's doing. I have nothing against Li Zhiqi, and I hope you realize that it's not the purpose of this video. I just want to show you that this is not genuine China. This is a fantasy. This is a product, something that's being shown to you, and it's something to enjoy. It's a fairy tale. There is, however, one group of her critics that I do resonate with, and those are the Chinese people that are complaining that she's glamorizing and glorifying a very difficult and harsh lifestyle. And I guess it is the people that have had to suffer or at least have family that are suffering this very difficult rural lifestyle that have the most to be upset about. And let's face it, anyone who's actually been to the rural countryside of China and spent some time there and knows people who live there know that it's no picnic. It's really difficult. It's a, it's a tough lifestyle. Add to this that she has been given the Good Young Citizen and Role Model for Chinese Youth Award by the Chinese Communist Party. Also given the People's Choice Award by the People's Daily, which of course is a massive uh, Communist Party mouthpiece. 
State media also constantly praises and promotes her for promoting traditional Chinese culture glo globally. And, of course, the Communist Youth League named her an ambassador, promoting economic empowerment of rural youth. So, of course, she's tied to the government in many ways. This also raises a couple of red flags. But the fact that she's on YouTube raises the biggest one. You see, you're not allowed to use YouTube in China. It's banned, it's forbidden, it's blocked. Chinese state media, however, gets a pass. So you'll find CGTN, CCTV, heck, the Communist Youth League, any kind of government organization is allowed to use platforms like Facebook, Twitter, YouTube. Because, like I've said before, in China, you're either government or you're little people. Of course, you get small YouTube channels here and there popping up, but as soon as they start to gain any kind of recognition or any kind of clout, immediately they're shut down by the Chinese government. And the reason for this is they don't want people to know that their rules are ineffective. If somebody is using a VPN to bypass the Great Firewall of China and making videos on YouTube, a Chinese person, a Chinese national doing this can get into a lot of trouble. And it has happened in the past where people have gotten into a lot of trouble. So why would this YouTube channel, which has so many subscribers and followers, be condoned and allowed by the Communist Party of China? Well, quite simply because it is the Communist Party of China. And it is soft power. And whether or not, and I'm going to give her the benefit of the doubt here, let's just say that she was just, I don't know, incredibly wealthy and decided to go back and film stuff in her hometown and hired a team uh, to follow her around and film her and uh, repaint all the houses and rebuild the entire village to make it look idyllic and stuff like that. Because trust me, it's, it's very misrepresentative of the real truth out there. Uh, not to say that there aren't beautiful areas in China. In fact, the countryside can be astoundingly gorgeous. I've seen it myself. But let's just say that she did have a lot of money and uh, expensive cameras and a crew and all that and decided to go and start this and, and uh, set it all up. If it was her own initiative, it certainly now has been co-opted by the Communist Party of China because it's such an effective global soft power machine. This brings me to other YouTubers that are busy pushing the narrative for China, especially since I've recently released that video where I talked about Westerners who are parroting Chinese party propaganda and denigrating the West. You see, there's something very strange going on here. Right now, we have people like the Barretts and Jio Nation and various others who are doing these kind of paid promotional tours, doing tourist stuff, kind of like the Lisa Chi stuff, showing off the culture of China, showing off the nice tourist spots, showing off all this. But it begs the question as to why? Why would they be making tourism videos about come to Xi'an? It's so amazing. You can see the terracotta warriors and look at the great food and performances. When right now, travel to China is almost impossible for foreigners. Why? Why promote tourism? when tourism isn't even an option and hasn't been for a very long time and won't be for some time to come. Why promote tourism? Because it's not about tourism. It's about soft power. It's about showing the world how amazing China is and how great all the different things the government has done to uplift the people and to build the infrastructure and to do this and to do this. It's basically just fluff piece Chinese propaganda. I suggest all of you take a look at Lisa Chi's videos because I think it's fantastic. This is what China could be. This is not how China is. It absolutely is not how China is at all. But it's a nice fantasy to have, just like you can believe that uh, France is full of romantic, you know, handsome men and beautiful women sitting, sitting on the sidewalk, sipping wine and, and chatting jovially. Or you can believe that England is full of top hat wearing gentlemen with monocles walking around with an umbrella. Remember that anything on YouTube coming out of China that is big and allowed to be on YouTube is connected to the government and therefore serves the government. Anyway, guys, I hope you found this informative and I can't wait to see you next time. So until then, you know the drill. Stay awesome.